Hey, I'm Ryan, and in this video, I'll show you how Speakeasy can generate and publish an enterprise quality type safe SDK. One that feels handcrafted and language specific, not auto generated and ugly. Speakeasy supports most popular languages, package repositories, creates Terraform providers, and has produced SDKs for companies such as Vercel, Mistral AI, and Kong. Creating an SDK has three phases. Generate, where the SDK is compiled. Customize, where fixes and improvements are made, for example, method names. And publish, where CICD is configured to create releases and publish to a package repository. Let's get into it using TypeScript and the Discord API to demonstrate. It all starts with the speakeasy quick start command. I'll reference the Discord API from GitHub so I'm always getting the latest version. Choose the SDK class name, language, package name, then the CLI gets to work processing the spec. So we're getting some errors here because the spec is invalid at the moment. And while the CLI tries to work around spec issues, it's not always possible. So why would an overview video show errors occurring? Because this is the real world and the open API spec landscape is a bit like the Wild West right now. So don't worry if you run into spec issues. Start by downloading and converting the spec into YAML for better readability. Then use the speakeasy lint command to identify the errors and make the required fixes until you have a valid spec. But if you're not an open API expert and get stuck, just reach out to speakeasy's engineering team for help. So with a valid spec, we can now use the CLI's compare method to generate the fixes we've made into an open API overlay file, which will then apply the fixes when the SDK is generated. Alternatively, you could make edits to the source spec, but as I'm not a Discord employee, uh, I'll stick with the overlay. The configure sources command updates the workflow.yaml file so the CLI knows to use the overlay during generation. Now we can use the speakeasy run command to generate the SDK. And success! The first version of the SDK has been created. Looking at the number of generated files, it's easy to be overwhelmed. But it's Speakeasy's job to manage these files. All you have to do is configure how they're generated, which is mostly done from the Speakeasy directory. Taking a look at the README, it's got everything a developer needs to get the most out of the SDK. Don't worry when you see the package name as unset, as that is auto-filled during the publish process in CICD, which I'll be covering later. The resources and operations section defines the SDK's API, and at the moment, every method is defined at the root level, making it difficult to see what methods are available for each resource. This isn't Speakeasy's fault, it's simply going by the operation IDs defined in the spec, which is a convention for the open API CodeGen tool. Now we've come to the optimize phase to make some improvements. This is where Speakeasy Studio comes in, as it can transform the structure of the SDK into the RESTful resource action format that developers expect. Accepting the improvements creates a new overlay, and here we can see the use of Speakeasy's open API extensions to define the groups and new method names. The README is now looking a lot better. Now let's test the SDK, setting a local package reference, then using the code for listing messages in a channel. But we're getting a 401 unauthorized error, even with a valid Discord bot token. So it turns out the Discord API is a bit weird, as the auth token requires a bot prefix. It would be a terrible hack to expect developers to add this prefix manually, but with speakeasy hooks, we can modify the HTTP object to include the bot prefix before the request is made. With the hook in place, let's regenerate the SDK with speakeasy run. And now the script works successfully. As you've just seen, SDK generation is not always smooth sailing. That's why flexibility and customization is important, so you can produce an SDK that developers will actually want to use. With the SDK ready for release, the final step is configuring CICD. Here's an overview of the update, generate, and publish process. Updates, such as spec changes, should use a feature branch workflow or similar for review and testing. Then, once merged into the default branch, the generate job compiles the SDK into a release branch, 
and creates a pull request. Finally, the release branch is merged into the default branch, triggering the published job and pushing the release to the package repository. The CLI takes care of generating the GitHub Action jobs, so regardless of your experience with GitHub Actions, you'll be just fine. The speakeasy configure GitHub command creates the generate job, and speakeasy configure publishing takes care of the publish job, with both commands providing the required configuration steps. Next, the repository is created, and as the gitignore file has been configured by the CLI, we can stage every file for commit and push to the repository. Then, once the required repository secrets are added and pull request permissions are enabled, we can run the generate job from the actions panel, creating the release branch and pull request with versioning automatically handled. Then once the pull request is merged, the publish job is triggered, pushing the release to the package repository. Now we can go back to the test project, install the SDK from NPM, and there you go. A TypeScript Discord SDK is now ready for use. That's how to generate an SDK using Speakeasy. Hopefully you're keen to give it a try and it's free to get started. For a detailed step-by-step -step walkthrough of what we've covered here, check out our Getting Started video series. I'm Ryan and thanks for watching.